Hi all and welcome to lesson eight, um, static and dynamic balance. Now again, this is gonna be one that many of you are very familiar with and it's not gonna be a problem uh, for you. But um, So this will be mostly a review. Uh, talking about balance testing, we wanna look at both static and dynamic components in a person who has vestibular issues. Now as an occupational therapist, as I complete these items, I'm not looking for gait. I am looking for how well their vestibular system is working to keep them upright during these functional tasks. If a person has a gait disturbance, I'm gonna refer them to a physical therapist. So you, if you are a physical therapist, you're gonna to wanna to look at splitting out the difference between what's going on gait-wise and what's going on with the vestibular system. And one test that really helps us to do that is the modified clinical test of sensory integration and balance, sometimes called sensory interaction on balance. All depends on who you're looking at, you know, who's, whose article you're looking at for that. And here's where that information is located in your textbook. The norms for the modified CATSIB, a person 80 or under should be able to do 30 seconds of each condition. So Romberg stance on a firm surface, eyes open, firm surface, eyes closed, and then standing on foam, eyes open, and foam, eyes closed. Now the original CATSIB involved uh, blocking vision with a visual with a visual conflict dome. Now that's not included in the modified one because they found that that condition really didn't seem particularly helpful uh, in terms of telling what a person's um, vestibular function was or sensory um, sensory integration function was. So what we're doing with each condition is we're is we're progressively taking away different conditions and seeing how people respond using their other sensory inputs to manage their balance. So if you're standing on a firm surface with your eyes open, you've got your um, proprioceptive abilities, your vision, and your vestibular. If we close your eyes, then you're relying more on your proprioceptive abilities. Um, so then if we stand you on foam, we've taken away your proprioceptive abilities but left you with your visual. And then we have you close your eyes and you're using mostly your vestibular abilities to manage your balance. So that's why it's um, a sensory interaction on balance. There also is a, a test called the sensory organization test that is done with um, computerized dynamic posturography that lets us see um, with a lot more um, you know, numbers and, and measuring how much a person sways when they actually complete this test. And that is a more sensitive test of assessing the sensory contributors to postural control. Um, so um, if you ever get a chance to use um, a computerized dynamic posturography um, made by either Neurocom or Burtek, um, I would really recommend that you, that you have a chance to see those and try those out and hopefully learn them for yourself. Uh, there are some instructions here. I'm going to let you read those. This is probably something that you already know how to do. If not, you can review it uh, using the book and the videos provided by the book. Uh, we have uh, some more information um, on, uh, uh, on what we might see um, with results. So if a person relies on their somatosensory inputs, um, oh, and this is with, with the, sensory the sensory organization test, you're going to see those in the testing. You're going to see their inability to handle their balance under the conditions that let you know um, what's going on with that. Um, so Sharp and Romberg, here's some norms for that, what you would expect to see with different ages. Um, that's just simply um, feet together, arms folded, eyes open. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Sharp and Romberg is when your feet are in a line. My goodness. Okay, so when your feet are in a line, um, and you'll be testing that. And then we also have norms for single leg stance. So you can also use those as measures of balance. Notice how much uh, a person's ability to stand on one leg decreases as they get older though. And the functional gait assessment and dynamic gait index are great assessment tools for people with vestibular dysfunction because they contain the conditions that require vestibular uh, inputs such as turning your head while walking, uh, nodding your head while walking, turning around at the end of a walkway, and those sorts of conditions really help us to know what's going on um, in the vestibular system. We also have some conditions that specifically look at central dysfunction, such as walking heel to toe or stepping over a box um, and uh, things like that. 
Um, and then we're also looking at lower extremity weakness with things like climbing stairs. Uh, so um, I have a little bit of a comparison here of the functional gait assessment and dynamic gait index. They're just slightly different from each other. Um, if you have one that you prefer or another balance test that you prefer, um, you know, you can, you can go ahead and use those. But I do recommend you use something that requires head and body turns to see how well the peripheral vestibular system is working to manage a person's balance. So the functional gait assessment and dynamic gait index are good with adolescents and adults. Um, if a person is a frail older adult, these may not be the test that you want to use. You might prefer to use the timed up and go test because this test lets us see um, how, you know, how much a person is at risk for falling based on, um, based on their performance on this test. Now, there have also been added cognitive and manual components to the tug test. Those have not been normed, but they do let you perform an observation on how well a person manages um, if they are added a cognitive tasking, such as counting backwards by threes, or a manual task, such as carrying a cup of water. Uh, here's some more instructions and some, uh, some information from the literature on how to go about uh, doing the timed up and go cognitive and timed up and go manual, so you have those references if you would like them. Again, the timed up and go is good for the frail elderly. If they do worse than 15 seconds, it could indicate a fall risk for them. Now, the 30-second chair stand is more a test of lower extremity endurance. A person who has a peripheral vestibular dysfunction might feel dizzy with you making them sit, sit down and stand up so many times, but they can generally do it, and it's not a problem of their endurance. Um, so you're probably familiar with that test as well. Uh, but it's a favorite of mine because you can learn a lot of information in a very short amount of time with a 30-second chair stand test. And the functional reach lets us see how far away the person can get from their center of gravity without losing their balance. So it lets us see how that, how that balance control is working for them. Um, and that would use a yardstick on the wall. Um, again, this is described in your text and you have that information. Um, if a person scores less than seven inches, that would be um, a person that is a frail elderly person and they um, might be unable to leave their home without help. A score of 10 inches or less indicates fall risk. And rehabmeasures.org has information on that for you. All right, thanks. We have one more week to go.